Hey everybody, I'm Taylor from Beard vs. Geek, where I show you it is okay to be a man and a geek at the same time. Today we are back with Star Wars, obviously, and we are talking about what the heck happened to Luke Skywalker. Over the weekend, I received a very interesting couple of voice messages from a family friend who asked this. First saved message. Tyler, what's up man? This is Wade, Tiff and Adam, backdoor neighbor, Mexico story. What the f happened to Luke Skywalker? I need to talk about what you think happened in this last episode because it's not resting easy with me. And I want to know what your perspective is on why Disney did that sh to Luke Skywalker. I'm I'm mad. So call me and tell me what what the what's going on. Taylor, it's Wade. Just because I was drunk doesn't mean I don't have legitimate questions that you have answers to. I want to know why they did that to Luke Skywalker. He didn't, wasn't portrayed right, I don't think. Why? You are the shaman of Star Wars. You are the guru. I'm asking the guru. That's one thing you can answer. Well, call me back tell me why. It's horrible. I thought, what do you think? Call me back. Well, Wade, uh, hopefully you've sobered up a little bit, but to answer your question, let's talk about Luke Skywalker. When last we saw Luke Skywalker before the reboot and the other reboot, we saw him in Star Wars Return of the Jedi. And one of the most defining characteristic traits about him in this movie is that he would do anything to try to redeem his father. This kid was a person solely devoted to the light side of the Force, and believed that even Darth Vader, who is one of the only two Sith around, would actually be able to turn to the light side of the Force. But, now that we've seen him in Star Wars The Last Jedi since he actually said something and been on screen for more than 30 seconds, well, wait, to answer your questions, we need to look at this from two different perspectives. One, a story perspective, and two, a real-life, this-is-how-we-make-film-and-tell-stories perspective. First off, let's get back to the very beginning, when Jedi wasn't even a thing yet. There were just people who knew and could be able to manipulate the Force. And they developed this temple on this island, the one that we see Luke Skywalker on. Now, this island had, was a great source of Force, both the light side and the dark side. And the light side residing on the top of the island, the dark side on the bottom. And the Jedi encampment right in the middle in between. Now, before Jedi and Sith became a thing, they were just Force wielders, and they were not white nor black, they were more gray. They understood the Force and about how you needed both the yin and the yang in order to make it work and be compatible. Now, after Return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker wanted to rebuild the Jedi, and so he started to train his own younglings, and one of those was Ben Solo, or as we know him, Kylo Ren. And this was a key part in The Last Jedi. Now we need to understand that once in a while, a long while, a person comes along who has the ability to use the Force to its maximum potential. It can do, the person can do all sorts of things with the Force. So that raw power, if you will. Now Luke, while training Ben Solo, realized that he was one of these people. And that his inkling was going more and more towards the dark side of the Force and in Luke's mind, that was getting more and more evil. So, Luke's idea was to nip it in the bud and kill Ben in his sleep and save the galaxy a whole load of trouble. Which might have worked, actually. But he, being the good-hearted soul that he was, could not accomplish the deed. But Ben woke up, saw him there, and thinking that he was going to kill him, drew his lightsaber and torched the entire Jedi Academy that Luke set up to begin with, killing all the younglings in the process. Sound familiar? Now, story-wise, this moment is pivotal, and they kind of explained it in The Last Jedi, but they really did not go into great detail about it, and Luke really did not really portray this defining moment in his life. You see, there are a couple of moments in a person's life that really stand out, that can completely affect how uh, we are as a person. Now, this event could be one day, it could be spread out over a couple years, a defining period, but in Luke Skywalker's life, this one event affected him for the rest of his life. And that's when Luke really realized that there is both light and dark side of the Force, and you can't have one without the other. So Luke, wanting to get some perspective, went and sought out the original Jedi Temple, and that's where he found himself on that island. 
That island that is both filled with the light and the dark side of the Force. And yes, Luke Skywalker might have skimmed a couple of books and in order to glean some information, basically he gave up. This was a person who devoted his entire life up to that point on the light side of the Force, but then realized that's not the entire picture and that there was no way that he could really impact the universe in a positive way. And so eventually he gave up and he lost faith in himself. And he basically hung out on the island killing giant fish and drinking blue milk straight from the source before Rey comes along. Now Luke seeing Rey having that same raw strength, he is again frightened because the last person that he saw with this ability went towards the dark side. Whereas Rey's kind of ish going towards the light. So that gave him a little bit of hope to actually help out the resistance and pull off a couple of really corny jokes in the process. Now, a lot of people have said that Luke Skywalker is not the Luke Skywalker that they knew. And in a way, really, that's a good thing because that shows that the character developed. It changed. Luke continued to live a life outside of what we saw in the movies. He continued to have experiences and to develop as a person. Can you honestly say that you were the same person you were even 10, 20, 30 years ago? No, I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago, nor was I the same person that I was five years ago. I'm a different person. Those events changed my life. With Luke, his events changed his life and that developed his character. That's what we like to see in our movies. But what we missed as an audience was we missed the developmental stage of how that character developed. And that's what pissed people off. People could totally understand how Luke came to be that way if they really saw it and if it was really explained to them and not in some weird cryptic manner, a little bit here, a little bit there, as it was portrayed in The Last Jedi. Now at the very end of The Last Jedi, when Luke Skywalker, spoiler alert, when Luke Skywalker basically comes to his senses and wants to have a little bit of hope and belief in the light side of the Force again, and he projects himself in order to battle with the First Order and Kylo Ren, finding the Resistance in time to get out, that kind of use of the Force takes a lot. I mean, come on, people. It's difficult for him to float rocks in the air when he was starting to use this thing in order to project himself light years away and actually, like, do stuff. That's massive use of the Force. We haven't even seen that in the Force before, except in this movie. And using that much Force, I theorize that he actually had to give himself entirely to the Force and was taken away into the Force. Now, reality-wise, here's what happened. The Star Wars series is out to make money, period. It is not out there to relive your childhood, period. It is there to make money. That is why Disney bought the rights to the company. They want to keep the stories going because it can give them money. And The Last Jedi did just that. You can't pretend it was a flop film because it made money, period. Just look at the little penguin things themselves. Those toys that they've been able to sell is a crap load of money. The All the merchandise, everything, this, that, all sorts of different things is making Disney money right now. And they are raking it in on the Star Wars franchise. But they wanted to appease the adults who know Star Wars their entire life. And they wanted to appease kids who are just introduced into the franchise and who can spend money on the franchise for the next 50, 60, 70 years. Now, they appeased a lot of adults by in the first movie when they basically remade A New Hope, except they brought it into a new light. Now they're trying to take things off and focus more on the new characters. So therefore, they wanted to do a couple of things in order to not make the same mistakes that the Star Wars franchise has made in the past, specifically that about humor. Now, in Star Wars Episode One, they made a giant mistake, and that was trying to roll in a lot of humor into one character. And you don't need me to say his name because you all know exactly who I'm talking about. Therefore, this new rendition of Star Wars wanted to learn from that and wanted to incorporate humor into its films in order to appease not only the young but also the old as well. However, they did not want to make that into one character who wears the comic relief. Since everyone has a sense of humor, it kind of makes sense to spread out the jokes among the different characters. But one of the things that they really screwed up on that affected Luke's character was too much humor. Was trying to take a person who was living his life in solidarity and who had that one horrible moment that defined the rest of his life in their cracking jokes. Now, a couple of jokes, I totally get it. 
the hitting of the hand, you know, psh, no, you don't do that, tickling of thing. You know, yes, that was totally funny and appropriate and totally within his character. The weird ah, thing after drinking the blue milk, not really in his character. The whole, not really in his character. Even a person who defined such a strong moment that affected the rest of his life, he still was a very serious person. And yes, he may, can make a couple of jokes here and there, but he's not really a comedian. And that's a big way that they impacted Luke's character. Now, another thing that they really screwed up on was the writing of it and not really consulting with people who knew Luke Skywalker the best. For example, Mark Hamill, who has been portraying Luke Skywalker for a very long time, and I'm sure he wishes that he could step out of the character's shadow every now and then. He established backstories to this character for himself to help portray the character. That's a very common thing for actors to do. He was basically handed the script and said, we're paying you, just do that. And since we have a screenwriter and director all rolled up into one, those types of directors like to stick to the script. They don't like their actors improvising on them that much. They wrote the words down and they want to see those words executed in that fashion as much as possible. By incorporating who knows the character best, at least bouncing ideas off them, it is a far better way to develop a character and a solid backstory to not only help the actor portray the character well, and by the way, Mark Hamill, if you ever watch this, you did a pretty good job with what you were given, man. Props. Parts of it, extremely right on. And I thank Mark Hamill for that, not the freaking writer and director. I believe that it was Mark Hamill who redeemed this character as much as he possibly can as an actor. In the end, it comes down to writing, directing, acting, and storytelling. Now, although acting can do a lot, it can't make up for all of those things. So Mark Hamill, thank you very much for portraying Luke Skywalker in the best way that you could under the circumstances. I just wish that the circumstances were better so that you could have even done a better job. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and go ahead and subscribe if this is your first time here. For more Star Wars, click right here, and for more manliness and geekiness, click right here. Because after all, if the women don't find you manly, they should at least find you geeky. And until next time, beard on, bro.